Hey guys, how's it going? We are outside in the garden doing our Q&A and um, I have a quick little PSA before we jump into it. Um, we have decided to uh, go down to one less video per week as of this moment. We're not going to be posting videos on Saturdays anymore. So we're going to just be posting Monday through Friday. Monday is still going to be the Q&A and then we're just going to be doing four gardening videos during the rest of the week and we're going to take Saturdays and Sundays off. Um, I haven't stepped away from my job full time yet and so I'm still there three work days during the week and that's leaving me two days to get videos filmed and edited and questions answered and things happening over on Instagram and um, I'm not fully ready to step away from my job doing hair so we've decided to cut back here a little bit and so just one less video and so we're going to take the weekends off to make it so that I have a little bit more time to film videos. Usually I have to film one up to three videos a day during my days off and it's just become a little bit too much right now. So I hope you guys understand um, this hopefully isn't a forever thing and we can jump back into doing more videos later on, but for right now we're just going to take one day off. With that being said, let's go over the videos that we filmed last week. We did the Q&A, um, why do all this work if we're just going to move, and then we did removing the entire veggie garden, escaping the smoke to my favorite place, flower arrangements for the neighbors, and then we did antique shopping with Brent, and the last video that we did was refinishing the garden bench with planting dahlias. So it was a busy week, it was a good week, there was a lot of flower arrangements that happened, and a coastal trip that happened, and um, it, was, it was a busy week. So let's jump into it. The first video was the Q&A, and the first question on that video is from Happily Retired 65 and they had said, isn't there some way you could utilize the patio cover you currently have to use on the new deck or patio? When you price concrete to stamp or bricks to use for the patio, using Trex to build a deck might be the best option. Can't wait to see what you end up doing. Love the mirror. We still need to have a general contractor come out to give us pricing of which option we are gonna go with. Like, I mean, this isn't our forever home, so we're not going to go with like the highest priced option, but we do wanna go with something like more middle ground that does look really nice still. So we would love to do like a stone patio or a paver patio. I think that that would be really pretty. We keep finding that on Pinterest and online, and that's just kind of what we gravitate towards. Um, we were looking at the Trex decking, but I just don't love the look of a deck and just it hasn't been like speaking to us. So if we can steer away from that, we're going to, um, but it also does come down to the price point. And then as far as the like gazebo that we have, the one that we currently have, it needs a brand new cover on it really badly. Like by next year, it's absolutely at minimum going to need a new cover to it. And so our thought was if we could put something that is like a wood one that looks really nice, we will get our money back more on that than we would on the one that we currently have. And plus Ashley really wants this one. So I told her that if, um, if we get a new one or when we get a new one, she could have this one. So um, we want something that's a little bit nicer for this back area instead of one that has holes. <laughs> the next question on that video is from Nick Farr and they had said, where will you be moving to? We have two options. Um, we will either be staying local, so we'll just be staying either like Chico, Durham, or Los Molinos still, um, but if we're going to stay local, we want at minimum five acres with a pretty decent sized house, probably like double the square footage we have right now. Right now we are just under a thousand square feet so if we could get like two thousand square feet that would be nice so if we're local that's what we want or if we're going to move far away which we would love to move to fort bragg or crescent city those are one of the two areas that we would like to go we would want at minimum one acre of land and we probably wouldn't mind if the house was you know the same size a thousand square feet or something like that so we have two options. We're still trying to figure it out and weigh our options of what's going to happen, but it's either going to be local right here or it's going to be in the coast. So either way, we'll still be in the same exact zone that we're currently in. The next question on that video is from Maria and she had said, Hi Robbie, I'm so confused about the cardboard mulch method. Once you do this, can you plant the plants on the mulch or do you have to mix it in with dirt so that underneath it adds dirt before planting? Sorry, 
I'm so new to gardening. I know it's such a dumb question. It is not a dumb question at all. Um, you can actually go watch Janie's videos about it and she does a really good job explaining it. So what she does is she goes in with cardboard directly on her native soil and then she goes in with a couple inches of soil that she brings in some really good compost and then on that she'll go in with a couple inches of um with like mulch and so she uses the tree service i think it's called like chip drop or drop drop chip or something like that and tree services they will bring you their wood chips and then you can add a couple layers of that we're not going to do it that way what we're going to do is we're going to just do the dirt and then we're going to do a ton of inches of the like good compost and then we'll go ahead and do like a very thin layer of um, mulch on it just like mulch our bed and then you plant inside your compost that you just brought in so you'll have to be able to raise your beds up quite a bit with some like soil and dirt and everything or at least the area that you're wanting to do this in but it's a really good way to kill grass um, and to kill other weeds that are happening new weeds will pop up because weed seeds travel by air and they will land in your new area and so you'll have to stay on top of it but if you're dealing with a crazy amount of weeds um, it's a really good way to get on top of it and if you're dealing with bermuda grass i've already seen it at janie's house it does work um, but I mean, you will get the occasional piece of Bermuda that comes through it and you just need to pull it. It's a good way to help you start to stay on top of it instead of having to spend months trying to eradicate the problem. It just makes it so that way as it starts to come back, it's easier to take care of that problem. And the last question on that video was from Rena, and she had said, maybe a natural wood color door same color as mud <laughs> uh, i think when we do get a back door we want to go with something that's a natural wood color when we do our kitchen we want to go with like a, a dark wood color and um we would love for the back door to kind of tie into it we have, i would also love if the front door tied into it but um, i think that's dreaming a little too far because it already has a brand new door on it uh, that'll be for the new house but if we could do something that was like a a rich wood color i think that that would be really pretty the next video that we did was i'm removing my entire veggie garden and it feels so good to have all of that gone i'm already so much happier with all of those things being gone um, we can sit inside and we can actually see to the veggie garden now that i also limbed up the willow tree right there it's just way better first question on that video was from sue shepherd and she had said robbie how do the chickens and little birds do in the heat um, they actually do pretty well so the budgies that we have they are from or the the finch they are from um australia so they're used to the heat and the chickens do pretty well we keep lots of frozen food in the freezer so they get fresh watermelon every day or they get frozen cucumbers every day or they, they get frozen corn every day so they're getting something frozen that they can peck at that um, thaws slowly throughout the day and it helps keep them cold like internally so that way it brings that heat down they also are in like the complete shade is where they're at so we don't worry about them overheating we also have a ton of like chickens that just run wild in our neighborhood and so we know that if those chickens are doing okay our chickens are doing okay so they do get fresh water i think it's like twice a day their water refills automatically it's set up on our drip irrigation so they get fresh cold water twice a day and uh frozen treats and then the budgies we don't really worry about them with the heat but we've tried putting frozen food in there and they don't really go for it they have zero interest in it when it gets too hot they go in their water that also refills twice a day um, or they just go up into the loft area and they try to get away from the sun so so far everyone does good and then we don't get too cold here so we don't worry about them in the like winter time because our cold is maybe one night at 32 degrees next question on that video is from fran jones and she had said that area looks so fresh after a major cleanup goodbye spiders as for the critters there was a baby lizard in a recent video do you get larger lizards or yikes snakes <laughs> um we don't deal with snakes on our property i know we have snakes in the area um i mean we get rattlesnakes in the area but we don't deal with them um and then we do get lizards we get alligator lizards and blue belly lizards and brent talks to them and he picks them up and he holds them and right now we have probably like 10 baby lizards like this big and they come out and the second that they see us they all run back and they hide underneath the plants it's actually really cute so the lizards aren't a problem uh they don't freak me out i mean i don't want to hold them brent will hold them but um 
Yeah, they just, they kind of do their thing and they eat all the bad bugs that I don't want in my garden, so I don't mind them. The next question on that video was from 3Duncan3 and they had said, Ugh, can anyone tell me which video he installed the shade cloth? I need it. Um, that was just a couple videos back. It's actually titled something something sh and installing shade cloth So you can just scroll back on the channel and find that but we did get our shade cloth from bootstrap farmer and the clips from bootstrap farmer also and so it was really easy to install I didn't have to like tie anything up and then we just used some metal conduit to build a little small frame to be able to attach all of the shade cloth to so super easy it's from bootstrap I will put a link to that in the description down below the next question on that video was from a friend and they had said I also have a borrowed view for my neighbor's crepe myrtle tree it is beautiful but leaves a lot of mess on my side do you clean it or leave it we leave it um I mean it's gonna drop all of its beautiful flowers here it's already starting to drop some of them but it still looks really beautiful um so as they drop because we have the shade cloth we'll go in and we will blow it off but for the most part because of where it's at um the, the flowers just kind of drop in the vegetable garden and i just kind of like let it turn into something on the ground so dirt back in the ground and the leaves i do go through in the fall and winter time and i break it up one time I think the borrowed view is worth it and I don't have to worry about the tree taking up too much space on my property so uh, I don't mind it at all. The next question on that video is from Peggy and she had said we saw Brent wearing gloves. Just curious as to why you don't. I wouldn't stick my bare hands into any thick vegetation. <laughs> okay I actually I didn't think about it and at the very end of the video um, as we were like finishing up filming I was like wow I probably should have been wearing gloves and Brent just kind of chuckled at me because I really should have been wearing gloves with how much I was freaking out about all of the bugs that were there. I feel like I should have been wearing gloves. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I've been really grossed out this entire time. Yeah, gloves would be better. So uh, it just, half the time things don't happen just because I don't even think about it. There's no like rhyme or reason as to why I don't do something. It just, uh, I didn't think about it at that moment. And so it didn't happen. <laughs> and the last question on that video is from Tracy and she had said, I love your garden channel. I'm fairly new to gardening in 9B along the Gulf Coast. Can you not treat for spider mites? Please don't come for me. I'm looking for education. <laughs> um, you absolutely can like treat for spider mites. It was just a vegetable garden and I'm, I'm not super into vegetables and with um, it being a vegetable garden I didn't want to spray something that uh, wasn't organic and I'm having a hard time staying up on needing to spray this year with organics to like get rid of the problem it like you need to spray every like three days and I just don't do that so you have to stay up on it um, so yes, you can totally treat for spider mites. You can spray a synthetic or an organic. You can also buy beneficials. I've heard of all of them working. It just depends on how much time you have, how much time you want to spend, and uh, how you feel about whatever pesticide you want to spray. But either way, organic or not, a pesticide is a pesticide. So if you want to spray it, spray it. If you don't, don't. Uh, just be responsible about it. So yes, you can totally spray something for spider mites in your garden. And the next video that we did was escaping the smoke to my favorite place in the world, Fort Bragg, which is where I want to move so badly. Uh, I just we came back here and it's hot and I was there and I was happy and it was peaceful and there was fog rolling in and it would burn off by the middle of the day and it was just just glorious out there. The very first question on that video was from Amy and she had said, thank you for sharing your trip. My daughter was born in Fort Bragg when we lived in Ukiah, California. Question, how do you decide on your music? It is always perfect for the video. Brent looks just as happy as you are. <laughs> um, okay, so we're trying to experiment a little bit more with our music. And so this was a huge experiment and we did music that had lyrics in it and it just kind of felt right for just this video. We spend way too long choosing our audio for our songs or for music. We pay for a subscription to be able to use music in our videos, um, otherwise we get hit with copyright strikes, and so we have to pay to use them, and this website that we use called Epidemic Sounds, they um, have music that we get to choose from a whole library, tons of songs, and we try really hard to not like fully repeat songs. It does happen because there's we put out a lot of videos and so it does happen um 
and it's just they've got a really good selection and we have kind of a vibe that we try to go for and we feel out the video after it's fully edited and then we put our music in and this one i have the instrumental version of that song that played which also played in the video um, and I also had downloaded on accident the one with the lyrics in it and I just kind of decided hmm, let's just try it and see what happens and I think it kind of worked for that video because there was a lot of me showing what was there and not a lot of me talking and I thought that the music for that one just kind of worked out perfectly. So we've been experimenting, um, trying to have fun with it and we just kind of like feel the video out, the vibe, and see what happens. The next question on that video is from Jennifer, and she had said, Hi, Robbie and Brent. Wow, wow, wow. How close is this to y'all? Everything grows so massive and beautifully there. Thank you for taking us along. I love this. That is about three and a half hours away from us, <laughs> depending on traffic. So it is not close at all. Um, three and a half hours. It's a long drive in the car. And the last little bit of the drive from Willits to Fort Bragg, and it's only like 40 miles, so it should take like half hour to get through. Uh, it takes like an hour to get through, and it is so windy. And I get car sick if I'm not driving, and Brent gets car sick if he's not driving. So somebody always gets car sick driving that way, and uh, we just try to like go as fast through it as possible just to get over being car sick. It is. It is the worst drive ever, but when you get out there, it is so worth it. And this trip that we had planned um, was totally not planned either. Well, it was planned by me. Brent didn't know. I had gotten off of work and I was calling Brent and I told him, I said, hey, I have a surprise for you. Um, and he's like, okay, you're crazy. <laughs> and I get home and all of a sudden Jalen shows up probably 15 minutes after I get home with one of her friends and Brent was like, what is happening? Why are there two teenagers here at our house? I had tried to be sneaky and I tried to pack our bags and coordinate everything. And so I packed our bags. I had Jalen come up to house it for us. And um, then eventually I had to tell him, I was like, hey, I need you to get in the car. <laughs> and uh, I told him, I said, we are going to Fort Bragg for a couple days. We're gonna get out of here. And uh, so it was a complete surprise. My initial goal was to figure out a way to get the suitcase in the car without him seeing me put the suitcase in the car, but I also needed to grab like blankets and pillows and a couple other things because I don't like sleeping on hotel blankets and pillows. Uh, <laughs> and there was a couple other things I needed to grab and I didn't grab them. I already couldn't grab them without him seeing. So I had to tell him like, hey, I need you to get in the car, but also I need you to help me grab some of these things because we're going to Fort Bragg for a couple days. So the initial goal was to just get him in the car and drive there and not tell him where we were going at all. So it was so worth it. It was so nice to get out of the heat. And um, yeah, the girls watched the house for us and it was just, it was a real treat. The next question on that video is from Judy and it, it relates to the last one. And she had said, just a nosy question. Who takes care of your dogs while you're away? I'm never able to leave unless Hub stays home because of our three dogs. Kenneling isn't an option for us. So if we can't take them, I stay home. We don't, we won't kennel the dogs either. Freya is so attached to us and to like a few people. So we try to get somebody to watch them. If we go to Fort Bragg, which we go often, we go, um, well, we try to go minimum once a year. Um, we will have Jalen come and stay the night. And now that she can drive, it is so much easier. So she'll come up, she'll stay the night, watch the dogs, watch the house. And then if she can't, our next door neighbor, Natalie, who is Karen's daughter, she will come over and she will house it for the evening. Um, or what we have done in the past before is um, we will have people just kind of come in and out throughout the day. So like Ashley will come over a couple times to, during the day and let the dogs out and feed the dogs in the morning and the night. And I'll have Natalie check on them here and there or some of the other neighbors. Like uh, we actually have, we have a ton of neighbors who have helped out and checked on the dogs before. So we've got like a little group of people. Do you want me to wait? <laughs> you good? Okay. So we have a bunch of neighbors that will help watch the dogs and it makes traveling really easy. Um, yeah, we, ha we have somebody who watches the dogs. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear Freya, she's dying. <laughs> you good? She was scratching herself and uh, she got a huge clump of fur in her paw and she licked it and she didn't like the taste of that. Huh, <laughs> she's right here. Oh, there she is. 
<laughs> okay. And the last question on that video was from Gordon, and they had said, wasn't Murder, She Wrote filmed in Mendocino? It was. There have been a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows, and things filmed in Mendocino. It's the cutest little town. So yes, there's a lot of things that get filmed there, and Murder, She Wrote was one of them. And we were in Fort Bragg, California, by the way. <laughs> Not Fort Bragg, North Carolina. We didn't just go to North Carolina for the weekend. The next video that we did was flower arrangements for the neighbors and cutting back the willow tree, and it is so nice that it's cut back a little bit. Still feels very natural. It just looks so much better now that it's cut back and we tried to cut it back or I tried to cut it back in a more natural way to keep it looking like not just a bowl cut. <laughs> the first question on that video was from Mary Wilson and she had said, why don't you use one of those pop-up containers to put your trimmings in? I have one. I uh, just didn't reach for it during that. It was actually, it was too much to put in that. And so that's realistically what it is. Um, the one that I do have, I probably need to retire it. The metal is popping through it. Both handles have popped out. So uh, it's it's time for it to go. And I did use it. I used like, I used it until it has fallen apart. And um, I probably should just order a new one. I'm gonna say I'm going to, but we'll see what happens. I do like it. I do use it. Um, I just don't always reach for it. I'm kind of to the point where I just cut everything and uh, I don't have enough time to fully deal with it and I gotta get back to making more videos and so I cut everything and then I just kind of walk away and uh, that has to be one of Brent's jobs is to go in and gather and clean everything up. So that's that's what it boils down to. The next question on that video is from Sue and she had said, did your flower arrangement sales come naturally to you or did you take a course just in awe over here? I think they've kind of just come naturally. I did watch a lot of videos on YouTube of people flower arranging and over on um, Instagram a lot and the biggest thing that i found is you need more filler than you do flowers and so i go in with a ton of like filler plants and like foliar growth and things like that and then i go in with just a couple flowers that's kind of been the biggest thing is you really need like two-thirds filler one-third flowers and uh, that has totally helped with what I pick in the garden to make an arrangement. If you saw, I didn't do a whole bunch of flowers. I just did mostly foliar growth, um, like the Japanese anemones and coleus and things like that. And then just a couple flowers tucked in and I do those last. And I think that that helps tremendously. The next question on the video was from Connie and she had said, Curious if your link is correct. <laughs> I found two sisters fused glass on Facebook and then was able to find them on Etsy, but it's not the same seller as your link. And the Facebook page looks similar to your garden piece, whereas the link has no garden pieces. Okay, so we had an issue with links. Um, I forgot to put the links in and then I was in the middle of filming something on a podcast with somebody else and um, we, we put the wrong link in. There is on Etsy, there is two sisters fused glass and there is two sisters artisan glass and we put in the link to two sisters artisan glass and not the link to two sisters fused glass um the art piece the rainbow art piece was from two sisters fused glass and they also have like some like fused glass christmas ornaments and lots of fused glass artwork and um, a lot of you guys also bought from the two sisters artisan glass that they actually went ahead and messaged me on Instagram and they're going to send out some ornaments. So when those get here, I will show you guys those on a Q&A because their ornaments are like very, very gorgeous. I've had ornaments sitting in my shopping cart from the Two Sisters Fused Glass for a couple weeks now, ever since that first piece showed up. And I did message the Two Sisters Fused Glass and um, at first I thought it was them who had sent it out but it, they, they'd written a handwritten note and they signed it from Melinda. And I thought Melinda was one of the two sisters. And it turns out Melinda is just one of you guys who had purchased that piece and sent it over our way. So to Melinda, thank you for sending us that piece. They We had written them a note and we had sent it to them and a little thank you card. And she said that she did forward you a picture of the thank you note. So. Thank you for that. I hope that clears up the confusion. Um, two Sisters Fuse glasses, who that art piece is from, and we did link the wrong place. The next question on that video is from Danielle, and she had said, Robbie, those arrangements were beautiful. The ribbon and lace were a nice touch. Question, what happened to the bare root strawberries and lisianthus seedlings from spring? 
The strawberries have actually been producing strawberries. They've actually produced way more than I thought that they would produce. I wasn't expecting any strawberries until this fall. And they've started to shoot out little runners, which is really cool because that means more strawberry plants. So they're doing really well, um, even though I killed some of them, but I didn't kill all of them. And then the lisianthus, and I planted them underneath the alder tree and they died. And I'm really, really sad about it because lisianthus is one of my favorite flowers for cut flowers. They're really gorgeous and not a single one of them had made it, which was super unfortunate, but strawberries made it, lisianthus didn't. And the last question on that video is from Newt and they had said, does your last name start with an M or did you steal Mason's necklace? Cute arrangements. My last name does start with an M. It is McMenemy, so it's kind of a tongue twister. Janie always... <laughs> You guys know uh, the movie Finding Nemo, and he can't say anemone. Uh, Janie always goes, <laughs> and So it is a tongue twister. It is McMenemy, and I do have this little necklace that I picked up that has a M engraved onto it. And I did pick this up at a little like local store, so I don't have a link for one of these initial necklaces. So, But you can find them online. Just search initial necklace and they become super popular in this last year. The next video that we did was antique shopping with Brent and flowers for my new vase. And I think that we're gonna go back and possibly see if we can get that one hutch. Cause we've been talking about it. And it was a gorgeous hutch and we talked about it on the car ride home. And uh, I think it would fit the style of our house like absolutely beautifully. The first question on that video was from Carla and she had said, Brent for the win. <laughs> he has such a kind smile. Your arrangement is lovely. Question, can you tell us more about the green and white plant? How much sun shade does it need? I'm in the same zone as you. Thanks, Robbie. And also to the getting more brave by the minute, Brent. <laughs> That's what we're gonna have to all refer to him as. Um, and it's not that he's getting more brave, it's that he doesn't have an option. <laughs> um, Yes, the green and white plant is the, it's either snow on the mountain, mountain snow, or diamond snow, euphorbia, it's euphorbia. I get it from Johnny Seed, and they have it labeled as three different things for the exact same plant. I have bought it three different times, I have three different packs of it, and they're all labeled differently of what they call it, um, but that's the plant. So mountain snow, euphorbia is what the most recent pack that I bought from them is, it needs full sun, as much sun as you can give it. When you cut on it, it does have a white sap that comes out of it that some people find really irritating to the skin. You also, when you cut it, need to put it in its own separate like vase for a couple hours so that way the white sap can come out of it. If you leave it in the same container as your other flowers, what's gonna happen is all that white sap is gonna go down and it's gonna get sucked up by the other flowers and it's gonna clog those stems. So it's one that you need to give a couple hours in its own container just to let that sap harden off and seal itself so that way it doesn't poison your other flowers. So full sun, give it a couple hours on its own. Um, it does make a really good flower or cut flower for flower arrangements. You will notice when you cut it, it's going to immediately wilt. That's okay, it will come back, it will be fine. Um, so it's a really good one, I love it. We've grown it for two years now and I do highly recommend that one. It's really, really gorgeous. The next question on that video is from Linda and she had said, I really like the green vase also. When you were recording in auto, was that a speaker on your chest? What kind is it? It is a microphone. It's what I use in most of my videos that I'm doing like very specific talking. Um, it is the Rode Wireless Pro and it's okay. It's not the best. Um, a lot of people are using the DJI microphones and they seem to like them. So this is what I use and it has a little magnet piece on the back. And so I just connect this into my shirt and like when I'm trying to get good audio, I usually poke this to the top of my shirt. So it like gets my voice when I'm trying to be somewhere that I have to be quiet. Um, but for the most part, I do try to use this piece right here. So this is a lapel mic and it just like attaches to your shirt and then you have a string right here and it's less obvious. It's less like bulky than this thing just like shining at you guys, which I think is heinous. <laughs> so yes, I do use microphone uh, and it does a pretty good job. It's super expensive. This isn't the one that I would recommend. If I could do it all over again, I would probably go with the DJI one. The last question on that video was from Saltwater Mom 3 and she had said, have you and Brent considered trying to build a custom hutch to fit your space? It might be a challenge, but the both of you are very skilled and you could bring your vision to life. No. <laughs> 
I don't think we're that skilled. Um, and then you also asked about like a, a trade and I don't, I don't know. I think I like, I want something that looks like it's a hundred years old because our house is a hundred years old. So that's probably the route that we're gonna have to go is we're gonna have to buy a hutch that is extremely old. That's extremely pricey. That fits more of the vibe of our house. And the last video that we did was refinishing the garden bench and planting dahlias from Fort Bragg and they are so PO'd at me. They are not happy at all. Uh, which I get, cause I'm not happy at me either from having to come back from Fort Bragg. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the bench looks great. I love the color of it. Brent thinks it's a little bit too light. Um, I don't know, I don't mind it at all. I think up against the black fence, it looks so stunning. Um, but I think also once I finish the aviary, the front of it, how I want it to look, it'll, it'll stand out even more and I think it'll look even better. The first question on that video is from Cheryl and she had said, good job on the bench. Are you going to paint the bistro set to match? It's funny that you asked that because I actually came inside after uh, that evening and I was looking out at it and then I looked at the bistro set and I thought, hmm, that would look really nice painted the same color. Um, and it's up against the black, so it would pop a little bit better. I don't think Brent loves that idea. He's shaking his head. Um, we'll see. As it ages, possibly, for now, we will leave it the Bistro Set color. I love the Bistro Set, so we got it from Walmart like this early spring, and it's held up, and it's been beautiful, and I actually do use it. Um, and so, still recommend it. Even in that color, I might end up painting it. <laughs> the next question on that video is from Stacy, and she had said, did you paint your fence or stain it? It is the bare house and fence stain, and it is a stain technically, but it is a mixture between paint and stain. If that makes any sense at all, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so it's a combination between stain and paint, and um, we used the paint sprayer on it, and it turned out beautiful. If you go and you ask for that color, which the color that we used is called slate, if you go and you ask for paint in the color slate, you're going to get blue paint. If you're wanting a paint match that uh, matches the black, it's called ultimate black. That's what we use on our house. So that way our fence matches the same color as our house. So ultimate black for paint and also the bare house and fence paint stain, whatever it's called. We'll pop a picture up on the screen of the can in the color slate and highly recommend it. We used a paint sprayer, highly recommend that also. There was very little overspray and I think you can just search, visit our garden fence and the, uh, or painting fence and it should pop up. The next question on that video was from Amy Lee and she had said, did you notice any difference between using EB stone versus the Espoma starter fertilizer? Did I notice? <sighs> It's hard to say because this year was a really, really harsh year heat wise. And so a lot of plants didn't do very well. I do have to say that I am happy that I'm going to be switching back to the Espoma fertilizer. It's easy to get now for me. It's right up the street. And also I like the, um, the feel of that one better. It's more granule where the EB stone is very, very dusty. We ended up buying like a 50 pound bag from a local place and I didn't like that stuff at all. And that was just like pure powder. Um, so this, the EB stone versus the Espoma, I like the Espoma better. I was just using the EB stone cause I could find it so easily. And I was having a hard time finding the Espoma. So I, we'll see. Um, I can't, I can't say that I saw a difference because of how harsh the year was this year. Um, and I think that that had a huge factor into things not thriving. Um, I don't want to blame the fertilizer at all for that. So I'm going to say both are good, but we are switching back. So maybe that says something about it because I still can't find EB stone pretty locally. So do with that information as you will. The next question on that video is from Sharon and she had said, hi, Robbie, love the bench. Do you put a clear sealer on it? I think sealing it would help last even longer. Love the aviary most of all. So pretty. We haven't put a sealer on it yet. We're going to when we have time. Brent said he's going to do it, so I don't have to do it. It hasn't happened yet. We'll see when he does it. <laughs> um, yes, I think at bare minimum, the like seat part should have a sealer on it and maybe the arms. So that way, like, I don't know, the arms stay protected. 
So yes, we should put a clear coat on it, but that is also why I went with something that was like a semi-gloss. So that way, if we don't end up doing it, it at least has that protection because I think the glosses are way more um, water resistant than something that is like a matte that will absorb all the water anyways. So yes, we will be doing that, I think. <laughs> and the very last question from this week was from Donna and she had said, love the new bench color. Is it hard to clean out the paint sprayer? Not at all, it is so easy. You unscrew the bottom, if there's any paint, you put it back in your paint can. And then um, what we normally do is we just grab the hose, spray the base out, and then there's a tube that you disconnect. We pull that tube off, clean that out, and then we fill the base back up with water where you would normally fill it up with paint, put it on there, and then you just spray it until it runs clear. Super easy to clean. That's what we do every time. It takes maybe five, 10 minutes at most to get the entire thing clean. Really easy really worth it. We've had this paint sprayer for many, many years. I think like seven or eight years at this point. And um, I, I can't recommend it enough. I do have a blog post that I'm trying to work on. We ran into an issue um, of all of our paint colors and all of my favorite painting supplies. So hopefully that'll be out soon. If you aren't a member of our website, I highly recommend checking it out. You can go over to visitourgarden.blog and you can shop the website. We have merchandise on there and um, the plant tags are still on there, which is the same color as our front door. And we also have a blog, which I have not done very well at writing blogs, but I want to get back into writing a few blogs, maybe once a month, send out a blog. And so this one that we're working on right now is all of my favorite paint colors round up into one place. So that way when we get asked about what is that paint color, I can just direct somebody over to our blog. So check it out, check out the website. Um, I think that's the only announcement. Yeah, so we're gonna do one less video per the week. So five videos during the week instead of six videos during a week and check out the website, visitourgarden.blog. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for visiting our garden and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.